Good morning. You know, it's interesting. So back in the day, I used to, um, I used to DJ uh, weddings. I still have people ask me if I would DJ weddings, and it's not that I don't want to DJ. Well, yeah, no, actually, it is. It's it's not that I don't um, like DJing weddings anymore. It's just a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to meet with the bride and the groom, and um. So, but anyway, one time they uh, requested, like, one of the members of the wedding party, maybe not the bride or groom, but one member of the wedding party wanted Tainted Love. And I went, um, at a wedding reception? And they said, yeah, 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 play it, play it. Everybody will love it. Everybody will love it. Well, not true. Uh, they didn't all love it. Uh, that person did, but I think there was a, the ulterior motive was, we're at 50. Um, the ulterior motive was, I think, he knew that there was a past relationship, like an ex-boyfriend or whatever, in the in the room. So I think he was having some fun at the expense of the bridal party. And those are the kind of friends that you just <laughs> you just love to have. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jeff Lane, you handsome mf'er. <laughs> It's good to have you back, brother. I forgot to brought my headphones in. I'll be right back. You brought your headphones in? They're right over here, I thought. Are they not here? Okay. Uh, you're just using your own headphones? Oh. I didn't mean to. I just oh, you brought extras. Extra. All right. The Wake Up Call with Phil Quinn, brought to you by Phillips Drugs on Richmond's Classic Hits 101. It is 645. Thanks for being with us. Uh, this is your Wake Up Call. We're brought to you by Phillips Drugs, your good neighbor pharmacy. Um, Jeff is here, and you're back from uh, a day of rest. I mean, even even God got one of those. <laughs> so I know you because you work the you work the side hustle. Uh, on uh, Fridays and Saturdays, and so you got to take, you got to get a full weekend in every now and then. What'd you do? Anything fun? Yeah, I almost died. I came within a couple of inches of dying, or at least being dismembered. I'm not kidding. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Tell me what's going on uh, here. My wife and I went to Hiking Hills, which is in southeastern Ohio, a really cool place, and uh, we were hiking on some trails, and I came within just a couple of inches of stepping on a copperhead. That was laying in the path. What is with you and snakes these I days? Don't know. Man, you're attracted to them like crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Get but, away but from this me. This dude was legit. And I screamed like a girl. <laughs> we took a picture of it, took it to the naturalist because I wasn't sure it was a copperhead. And they said, yep, that's a copperhead. And they wanted to know exactly where it was because people are walking on this trail. And I'm telling you what, if I'd have stepped on that sucker, might not have died, but I'd have had a pretty bad day. <laughs> He has an unbelievable fear of snakes. It's uh, unrivaled by anything else. So, yeah. All right. Um, let's get to some news. Tell me what's happening. Um, okay, let's uh, follow up a little bit on Phillips Drugs. We said that we would do that in their dispute with the city. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting word now that up to four other buildings have sustained water damage where none existed prior to construction. Two of those near the corner of South 10th and Main. One of them even had sandbags in front of it as recently as a couple weeks ago. Another near the intersection of 6th and Main. The city, of course, has acknowledged all along that there are drainage issues on several street intersections downtown, but we'll see if the Phillips, this is what's going to be interesting, will the Phillips claim sort of prompt others to come forward? That's what uh, that's what I'm kind of waiting to see. Yeah, I, I shared the, the story that you did on Friday. I shared it yesterday for whatever reason and um, had another uh, building owner downtown says, never had water before, now I've got it. And he's on 6th Street. The past not even going through that. Yeah. So we have we have an issue here, and I want to get it solved. Certainly I want to have a solution remedied or one planned out before we get to Election Day. Right. This is important to me. I mean, I think it's important to a lot of people. Well, sure it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, along those lines, the city yesterday hiring an Alabama firm to help with strategic planning for downtown Richmond. Um, You've seen these things before, right? I, okay, yep. so 12000 is not a lot. We've paid a lot of consulting companies to tell us what we already knew a lot more. Here's what I find interesting about this. They already have strategic development partners, and the EDC was already meeting with them prop about another project. Maybe Elder Behrman, I don't know that, but it would seem to me that 
if you're going to hire a consultant, hire one that's got friends in development world. That's not just there to do research like a you know group of Ball State students. Here we go. We're going to come in here and tell you what you already know. Your city sucks. No, I mean you know <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. Um, so I would I hope that um, twelve thousand is nothing no, in this world. It's nothing, and and yeah. it, and sometimes it does. It does pay off to have a fresh set of eyes looking at things. Yeah, I'll take that because of the connections that they've got. What I did find interesting is that uh, all-terrain vehicles are not allowed on r roads in the city. Uh, council thought they were too dangerous. Redevelopment gives fifty grand to the parks department and the street department to go buy an all-terrain vehicle to sweep off the <laughs> sweep off the bike path. It's like, uh... <laughs> yep, to keep the snow and the leaves and other debris <laughs> off the bike paths. Yes, that was the other development at the redevelopment commission. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The other development at the redevelopment. I love That's it. Right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, a couple of early morning drug arrests, all, both of these taking just or taking place just a couple of hours ago. One was a drug dealer, an alleged meth dealer at North 13th and J, Richard Tillery, his name. And then at the Greenwood Apartments, 26-year-old William Manning arrested for felony battery on a police officer and intimidation. Um, let's see. Oh, abnormally dry conditions across the Whitewater Valley. We all know that. But now one county has issued a burn ban. That's Union County, and I fully expect others to follow. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, it means all outdoor burning is banned in Union County until further notice. The Union County, like most of the Whitewater Valley, is classified only as abnormally dry right now. Eastern Dark County, as we said on Friday, is classified as in a moderate drought. Yeah, okay. And real quick, work is uh, progressing to reopen the Fairfield Causeway. That's been an issue for a lot of folks who use Brookville Lake over the spring and summer. It's been closed for months and months now for major repair. It's now going to open, according to an engineer, in mid-November, and it's expected to finish under budget. And that's what I've got. All right, so clearly my engagement did not make the news. Why not? I was just about to say congratulations. Thank you. Because I've talked to you since then. Yeah, I, I got a little snippy yesterday when you weren't here. <laughs> and I said, I have 4,000 Facebook fans, and less than 1,000 have congratulated us. So that's 25% of my friends care, care enough to say hi. <laughs> No, it's great. I'm I'm excited, but I don't. So here's the deal: we're not going to turn the radio station into some bridal thing for the next, you know, year and a half or whatever. You know, we're not doing that. I just right. I'm just having fun with it while I still can. I'm going to sell my convertible. Did you know that? I'm selling it. What? Yeah. Well, no, it's time. I mean, look, you 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 buy one thing, you got to sell one thing to pay for that thing. <laughs> it worked for Robin Hood. <laughs> Um, I, I have a beef with the newspaper. Am I allowed to, can I vent that with you before we ask our Q&A? Vent away, brother. It's your show. So my mom is all about trying to see who died. And she lives at the Leland, and they take such great care of her. Um, and they have a newspaper there, and it, and it, would, it would work if she did it. But, you know, mom's, mom's a little possessive. And uh, she wants her own paper. So I, I called the newspaper, and I talked to some telemarketer person in, I think it was Pakistan, I'm not sure. I could barely understand her, and I hate that. I hate even saying that because it's not meant to be that way, and I get that, but she said we can't deliver to the Leland. And I said, well, they get other papers there. What are you talking about? And then I heard from the Leland folks that it takes a couple weeks for it to get started, that they can't deliver to the room, they just leave it at the front desk with the name on it. Nothing. Two weeks. Nothing. She's not received the newspaper. All of her friends could have died. We don't know. But, <laughs> but again, all she really cares about are the obits. And so I'm, I'm, I go back to my earlier thought. Maybe we should do it again. Maybe we should, maybe we should get... Matt Stiegel's coming in. I should ask him on the air and say, look, we need a sponsor. Let's get some obits. Not that we would read them live. Or, maybe it's just something we just put on, on the website. But... Don't don't say we unless you got a mouse in your pocket. Well, I my obit reading days are over. I that's fine, that's fine. And and look, mom doesn't get on websites, so I don't know what to tell you. But I thought I would be I thought I would be nice. I reach out with the olive branch to help out the newspaper, and they slap it away, <laughs> like some kid at a candy store. No, you don't get a newspaper. You know, and I'm just like, come on. I pay for the online subscription. I get it. Tr Truett needs to eat. I want to feed Truett. I want to feed the, the new sports guy, Proctor. I want to feed you guys. I'll do my digital subscription, but if I need a newspaper from my mom, help me out, brother. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Uh, our, you like that one? Yeah. Shorter than they have been. 
Uh, question of the day. How long is the perfect nap? And I know you're a nap guy, and I'm, I'm interested to get your take. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mine's longer than most. That's okay. Let me uh, back up and say my naps take <laughs> longer than most people's. Okay, I got you. Uh, two hours is a good number for me. Well, but do you sleep? You get to bed late, though, right? Yeah, but I only sleep about five hours yeah, overnight. Yeah, that, but that's it. It says that 26 minutes is the perfect number. Now that's power nap numbers, yeah. And I don't know that I agree with that. I I don't get a nap every day, but I snuck one in yesterday, and it's about an hour and a half, and I felt great. But then at eleven o'clock, I'm wide awake, going, "Uh oh, <laughs> this ain't good." So anyway, all right, we got a roll. Thank you, Jeff Lane. We appreciate it. See ya. Great results just for you. All right, so um. Yeah, come on, Palladium. Get Help me out here. I'm trying to help you out. Let's go. Um, coming up on the show, we've got uh, Matt Stiegel talking about Quality of Place Conference. we got the Help the Animals Fur Ball uh, fundraiser, which I'm excited to be able to bring to you. What else we got? Um, what are you doing? Are you, what are you, what are you I want to show this copperhead that almost... Oh, you have a it? picture of the snake? Can you see it? Oh, my... Can you see it? Oh, my... God. Here, look. Look. <laughs> Bad day if you step on that thing. All right, all right. Uh, I don't even know what else the hell we're doing. Go answer the QOD, listen to the radio, listen online, listen on your smart speaker, all that sort of jazz.